right, and here is a video review for the Flames Toys Fury Model, or Fury Model uh, Attack Mode Optimus Prime. It's, it is a model kit. You build it. It's very much like a Gundam kit if you've built any of those. Um, it, it, but what's neat about it is it is officially branded. That's why you'll notice the Autobot logos on the shoulders. Flames Toys or Flame Toys has been giving us, uh, like I said, here's the box. You can see officially licensed Transformers logo and everything. Uh, and actually kind of nice art on the packaging, very cool looking. But they've been giving us, they, they did uh, a really nice high-end drift action figure. And uh, they've got a Tarn on the way, as well as a um, Star Saber and Victory Leo that uh, do combine to form the armor, although they don't transform. I think that's pretty much any license outside of um, Hasbro itself. Like, they'll license out the likenesses, but you can't make transforming figures. I don't know if that's a hard official rule, but it seems to be the case outside of some of those small model kits you see at Wonderfest that are limited. Um, so yeah, but it's a plat fully inject molded plastic model kit. Uh, the colors, this is unpainted. This is just using the stickers and the, and the details as it comes in the package. So yeah, I could have, I could have, you know, if you want to paint it up, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to, I had a long day at work and I just wanted to kind of relax and build something. So I just put them together. Um, but it's, it's a pretty decent use of the decals they have. I like his spine back here uh, on the model kit. And he's very opposable, like I said, very much like a Gundam. He's, he's got a lot of joints, especially in the knees, like some of the the actual articulation joints at the arm, elbows, and knees are made out of that same kind of hardish, rubbery plastic that like Gundam ball caps for their joints and stuff are made out of. And it really helps make them stiffer in here. But yeah, some nice stylistic detail here. Kind of reminds me a little bit of something that could come out of Cross Dimension, but very angular and uh, dynamic. You don't have to have him crotch thr thr thrusting his crotch forward as you can see. Um, although that, uh, what's my dishwasher doing? Sorry about that dishwasher decided to growl at me. So anyway, um, like I said, doesn't transform, but you, I, I like the wheels here on the side of him. And like I said, posability wise, he's, he's insane. Like you got a ball joint up here at the neck, at both ends of the neck, so his head can look up and down. You can kind of angle his antenna however you wish, back, forward, out to the side. Uh, you got a little crunch there in the in the shoulders. And these click cl actually click in and out, although it's, there we go. So you can have them sit a little closer to the body or not when they're not crunched. You can kind of pop that out a little bit for a little bit of extra range. Bicep swivels, like pretty much everywhere you'd expect a gun. And the wrist has a hinge here to move in, as well as the actual ball joint at the wrist itself. Ab crunch. You see there's a ball joint up here into the body, a ball joint here, and then a ball joint at the waist, although some of the waist armor keeps it from moving ball joints on these little pieces so his legs can move out of the way. The kind of standard swivel hinge front to back and side to side at the hip. Pretty decent L or knee bend. A uh, ball joint there in the foot and then a ball joint in the toe as well. It was a fun build. It took me about three hours total, although I did have some distractions and some of that was putting these these little uh, gold stickers here on his chest are teensy. Like the, we're talking about like head of a pin and even smaller for these three center ones. So <laughs> I took a little doing. But yeah, even just using the base stock stickers, he looks pretty awesome. A few places, places where I, I will probably end up using some glue is one on these smokestacks. They're just a couple little tabs and with the length and the leverage over the thing, it's very easy to pop them out. And also I'll probably glue this front cap onto the shoulder pad because you can see it's kind of hollow. It's just this, these three panels holding it together. And if you get, get it, push on it just right, it'll send piece, it'll pop apart. Uh, when I was trying to put the arms on, I had you, one, when you attach the arms, lift this up on this hinge here, this dark hinge, and use the actual arm itself to plug it in. Because if you try to do it, put it all together and push it in like this, you are going to pop these pieces apart. It, 
before, before it locks in. Like that's, that's, I found that out the hard way. So do that. You can see he's got a pretty decent range of posability and pretty solid in a lot of different poses as well. He does come with weapons uh, and interchangeable weapon hands. Uh, you get both his standard blaster rifle as well as an axe. And again, here, here's where the one place where the stickers kind of fail. I'll probably paint the axe up. But again, I wanted to show off just this is the basic kit that you get in the box. I do like that he's got tires on his axe to make it look like more like in a little... Uh, uh, receptacle down here. It, it, it looks more like it could be made out of car parts, like an exhaust pipe and some wheels, which is kind of cool. You also get two, and these are the pieces you're going to lose because the, you get this little tiny clip here um, and then a, a different larger clip. The tiny clip can go up here. And, and there's an angle on it, so you want to make sure it angles the right way to match up with his back there. And when you do that, uh, it allows you to... The axe has some little tabs on it, so you can store the axe on his back. Um, the instructions show it attaching like this. Um, well, it doesn't want to stay in this time. Well, that's probably because I'm not pushing it in all the way. But they show it attached like this, where it kind of sticks up over his back which I think looks a little silly. You can take it, you can see there's a couple different tabs. If you tab it in upside down, one, it tabs in a little better and it doesn't look quite as silly, although it does stick up over behind his head, but then you don't have the whole ax head sitting behind his head. You can also use that same clip. His gun has a couple little clips on it, on the so little tabs on the side of it. So you can tab his gun on up here, either like this or uh, facing up like that. The gun, however, uh, you can also, those two tabs also fit into the back of his bumper. So if you want to store the gun on him, you can also tab it in across his back like that. Which I think is probably the best way. It kind of looks like the uh, the Mark II's bazooka. Is the Mark II I'm thinking of? Um, so you can put it in there like that. And then you also get this other clip that goes on. Same spot. And it actually grabs this part of the gun just below the handle, so you can plug it in. You have to move his head forward, but you can clip the gun on like that as well. I don't think any of the weapon storage options, aside from across the waist, really uh, look all that amazing when, when, they're, when they're storing them, but uh, they are options that are there for if you decide you want them. I would have liked it maybe if this were a little lower on his back, but, but like I said, storing the gun across the back of the waist, I think, is probably the best uh, best option there which also beneficially does not require any of those clips so you can put them in a safe place and then not risk losing them to swap the hands out uh, if you, again if you've built Gundam kits you kind of know how this works uh, you get the secondary hands and you just have to pop them apart and then Put the gun in, there's a little tab in there that'll fit around the gun. Close the hand back up. And then plug that back into the wrist. And now he's holding his gun. For the axe, there's a secret to the axe because when you build the axe, you can see it's fully circular, like this tube here. But to put it in his hand, I thought maybe they had, they had molded the hands wrong but I was wrong because you open up the hand just like you do for the gun and you can see it doesn't fit the rounded part of the axe anywhere. But there's a little clip here that goes on that uh, one helps hold the two halves of the axe together. But when you take that off, you can see that opens up a squared off section there that fits in the hand. So once you do that and then you take this and then clip the hand back together. Uh, and, e and either weapon can go in either hand. You just pop the closed fist off, pop his axe on, and now he's got his axe as well. And again, pretty the way the joints work, he's pretty secure and sturdy in holding both of his weapons upright and in various poses. He might wobble a little bit, but he doesn't droop, which is nice. 
Also, while we're popping the hands off, one of the things that's not clear in the instructions, one, there are instructions for where all the stickers go, so pay attention. They're, sometimes Some of them are hard to spot, like these ones here on, on the front of the waist pieces, um, and these two up here on the shoulders. I was like, where are they in the instructions? And I did eventually find them. But when you put the arms together, there's a lot of sprues, like some of the inner parts, you get two copies of the same sprue and uh, and use those parts for each, for both their left and right legs. The arms, you can see there's an opening here in this, this is one of those rubbery pieces that is facing forward on this hand and it actually faces down. Like the, the, you have to basically have this piece swapped on the right arm because it's the exact same sprue. So when you do it, it, I couldn't tell that the opening was on the front, so I originally had it on backwards. And if you have it on the wrong way, the uh, the wrist doesn't attach and bend properly because you can see it gives you that little kind of wrist bend to the inside as well as a little bit to the outside. And if you have that on backwards, it will only bend slightly out to the outside and won't bend in at all. So make sure when you're building the left arm that the opening in this uh, wrist connector piece faces the fore part of the arm. A minor thing I know, but. And also if you want, you can just, if you're just gonna leave the weapons in the hands, you can just leave the hands on the weapons and just swap them out when you want to. Although if you store it on the back, it'll look silly. But there's just the standard prime. And then just to give you an idea of about how big he is, um, it's, it's, it's like a, high, basically I'd say it's about the size of a 1-100 high grade Gundam, uh, roughly in that area. Real grades are a little shorter. But here he is with uh, the classic Optimus Prime mold. That's obviously the Botcon Jinrai. But uh, you can see he's about about classics Voyager Optimus height. Obviously a, a little less massive, a little skinnier due to the design. But uh, not a not a huge model kit, but not a tiny one either. I think if you've built a Gundam before, you know what you're getting into, and it's it's comparable level of skill if you've built any of the uh, one one hundred scale high grade Gundams you're in for a similar experience. There are a few things that I think it does a little better, like its use of that kind of rubberized plastic in the uh, elbow and uh, leg and the knee joints uh, really helps make those not floppy and loose. And then just a few build techniques that I haven't, I, I build a lot of real grade kits, so uh, I haven't built a lot of high grades in several years and they may have stepped up their game too. I just remember, overall, it was a fairly pleasant build experience. Um, and even if you don't have, you know, high painting or airbrushing skills, you still get a really nice looking figure at the end of it. I would like to see maybe further down the line, like a premium release of this kit, where maybe some of like the smokestacks and maybe some of the grill pieces were chromed out. But, um, but for their first model kit, uh, in the line, it's a very nice looking Optimus. It's very dynamic, and uh, I'm looking like I know they've got like the Starscream and a Bumblebee that comes with this little hella pack. I'm watching the little Action Master uh, Bumblebee, which will be cool. What, what finally got me interested in this line was that in the last one of the last toy shows, they showed off a grayscale prototype of an IDW Megatron, like Megatron from More Than Meets the Eye and Lost Light, which is one of my one, one of my favorite Megatrons, and honestly, one of my favorite Megatron designs. So, and that's where I started really seriously looking at this model kit. And uh, I emailed them, and they're like, well, we'll send you this one. And uh, the Optimus, because he's ready to go. And I said, I would like to check that out. And here he is. And uh, like I said, two and a half, three hour build. Uh, some of that with distractions from my dog. But uh, a really nice, solid kit. And lots of posability. And... A very nice looking Optimus, all told. You can get him in some really just kind of subtle and, I mean, even, even cool action-y poses you can get him into. But yeah, nice looking model kit from Flame Toys, and I'm looking forward to more.